you mess with me, stand next to me. I teach you everything. I got the recipe. You got the recipe. You want to be like me. I got the recipe. Yeah. Hey, YouTubers or people tuning in from the first video. Um, it's your girl, Jimmy Pink. Um, I didn't get a chance to finish the last video due to time restrictions and basically what this video is I've entitled it's a special edition of Hot Mess um, RuPaul's Drag Race recap which is the library is open and the reason why I'm doing this is because there is a lot of bullshit shenanigans and falsifications going on on this season so basically not only am I gonna get some stuff off my chest I'm gonna do some reading and it's basically gonna be me reading more so this episode but also the whole season as a whole this is just when the fuck a pot of shit boiled over was this episode for me I have fucking had it officially Shout outs to Detox. So, the first thing is, so, let's start with this. This whole season, we've had big pop hits. Like, literally, I thought they blew the budget on it. Because they had top songs by top stars and... I don't know why it seems like the songs always have something to do with the people that was in the bottom two, excuse me, the people that were in the bottom two or the challenge some kind of way. Best examples I can give you is last, excuse me, last week's episode, it was It Takes Two by Seduction. Well, it took two for you to win the challenge because you have to dress somebody else up. Um... It just so happens after Monica Beverly Hills comes out and says she, she's really transgender, the song is the only girl in the world. And it just so happens that when Alyssa is lip syncing it for her life at the bottom, she's dressed up like Alexis Carrington from motherfucking Dynasty to Ain't Nothing Going On But The Rent. Like... Lies and fabrications is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this shit starting to be like every other reality show. It's starting to seem extremely scripted. Okay? Not only that, I mean, there is some shade going on by the producers. Here's what I mean by that. Before I say that, it has become very apparent to me on this season that challenges were actually set up to get to a certain top three or top two to be the drag superstar. Okay? First thing that I want to go over. So, with that being said, we have the sugar ball. The whole fucking challenge is based in candy. Some of the songs, just off the top of my head that I had n noted, you couldn't get I Want Candy by Bow Wow Wow. You couldn't get Candy by Foxy Brown and Khalees. You couldn't get Candy by Mandy Moore. I'm sure you could have got Candy by Mandy Moore. Um, even the song from the 50s, Lollipop by the Cordettes. Like, these songs were all so much more fitting. Now, you get to this top four that you have. You have Rolaska Tops, Roxy Andrews, Detoxicunt, Alaska Thunderfuck, Jinx Monsoon. Sickening top four, and really in all honesty, from what I've seen in competition, arguably probably who should be the top four. It, it, it's, it's arguable, but that's probably who the top four were should have been. The song they lip sync to... I'm not even about to try to pronounce the name of the artist. I'm not about to pronounce the name of the song. The song is from 1954 or 7, and you know how I go, you know how I do. It'll be on the bottom. 
this song seemed to be completely handpicked for Jinx Monsoon. Let, think about this. Think about this. I understand a good drag queen is supposed to turn the party on any song. But you didn't have pop songs all the way up. Then once you start hearing the song, didn't you already know like, oh, Jinx is going there. They're, they're not going to let the top three be Velasco Talks. Okay. So, all of a sudden, you basically got this campy song. And then it occurs to me. This is the fifth season. There's never been a camp queen that won. You got some questionable people that won. Baby Sahara Zanae. Am I saying that right? Um, Tyra Sanchez. Even though Tyra Sanchez did turn the party on every, every challenge. But was she better than Raven? I can't say I agree with that. Raja definitely shouldn't have beat Manila Luzon. And Chad Michaels, as cold as Chad Michaels is, shouldn't have beat Raven and All-Stars. Bottom line is, is y'all pick who y'all want to pick. And y'all set it up so. I'm going to go so far as to say that this final challenge with these last three is setting Roxy up for failure. Flat out, I'm going to say it, Roxy's not going to win. Roxy is not going to win. They want a camp queen to win. They're going to set her up for failure. In any rate, I've seen it the whole season. And this is, like I said, this just, that's what they're doing. It's shitty. And if you have another crop of bullshit ass queens like you did this year, I'm sorry. You will fall by the wayside like America's Best Dance Crew did. And I will not be watching this anymore. The library is open. Jinx Monsoon. I have no idea how you think you're in a monsoon when your hair is always so thirsty. It's dry and it's brittle. Kind of like that cracked makeup that you wear on your face. Your sense of style is abominable. And as I've made comments before, no wonder you did so well on that last challenge, boo-boo. Of course you can dress a 67-year-old. Your whole wardrobe is for a 67-year-old. That candy couture that you had on tonight, sweetie darling. Honey, you look like a candy cane in April. After they've all been packed away and somebody dropped the box and cracked them. Because you are the face crack of the season. That orange suit Executive realness, you say? I say Macklemore realness because it looks like the thrift shop. It smells like piss and it costs 99 cents. As for that sweet 16, that sweet 16, I can't even read no more on that. That sweet 16 was just a hot damn mess. You should just be, my show should just be called Jinx Monsoon because you're a hot mess. Now, let me close the library for a minute. Let me explain to you why I went in on Jinx like that. Previous seasons, regardless of what kind of talent Queens had, if they were not bringing it on the runway, they asses went home. But let's keep it 100. We're talking about drag queens. The look is important. It's not about you doing a different type of drag than the pageant girls. It's the drag that you do is busted. Busted. Like, I, I can't. 
pointblank.com is just busted. I have watched this show since season one. And I have seen some very questionable fashion. And every time it was questionable fashion, that bitch got sent home eventually. No way did they make it to the top three would a busted look like that. No way. No way. And I think she's very talented. But I think Pandora Box was talented. And when did Pandora Box get kicked off? Don't worry. I'll scroll it. I'll look it up. It's just so obvious. Like, even Alaska. At first, I didn't like Alaska. I think, like, a lot of people thought she was just going to be a Sharon knockoff. She really came into her own, and I like Alaska, and I do believe she should have made it in the top three. But she's a camp queen. If you think Alaska is unpolished, then Jinx is just dusty as hell and chalky. I mean, I... I'm torn because I do like Jinx. And I agree with Relaska Talks. I think people, I think the judges thought that they were throwing her under the bus, but I don't. I think those three queens really looked at her and said, out of the four of us, she is the weakest. And I agree. I think the top three should have been Relaska Talks. I just, I just don't know why RuPaul has such a fucking hard on for Jinx. She gets away with murder on the stage and then when the other girls read her and say, well, you shouldn't even be here or you look like this and you get called pretty, even the way the producers is doing it, they painting her out to be the victim like she's so innocent and she's so great. She's not that great. She is talented. I'm sure she is an excellent performer. Just as Shangela is an excellent performer. But they got Shangela together because that look wasn't right. And a matter of fact, mm, wasn't it the ball challenge? When she had to make a whole outfit out of hair and her outfit wasn't to par? On that note, I'm going to go ahead and read this whole season. This season of The Fish is more like sleeping with the fishes. It's so fucking boring. I am bored to death. I've had it. It's just... I can't... This season is just so weak. And the queens, from the very beginning, that I thought were the strongest... Were Roxy and Detox, and towards the end, yeah, Detox did falter a little bit, and yeah, her candy couture was not on point. But let's look at everybody's three outfits. Detox only missed on candy couture. Jinx Monsoon missed on all three counts. And it's a shame that you did that on Jackie Robinson Day. Because three strikes and you're out. Except for she's not. I call bullshit. I call bullshit. So I'm sorry this video wasn't all hilarious like I thought it was going to be. But like, I'm, I'm, I, it seriously just pissed me off. And I'm too tired to go ham and it's three o'clock in the morning and... I can't, but thank you for watching, and this video, out of all of them, you know, as always, leave your comments, let me know what you think, what you feel about the season, what you think about this episode, check me if I'm wrong, I invite you, I'm sending for you, come for me, open invitation, the library's open, deuces.